like this one. Now we're going to learn about the gear ratio, or we can also call it velocity ratio. On word, we'll call it velocity ratio. So the velocity is inversely proportional to the number of gear teeth and the diameter. So the more teeth you have, or the bigger the diameter of the gear, the less is the velocity. So the red one is moving faster compared to the green one because the green one has more diameter. So for this simple gear train, the velocity ratio is the velocity of the driver over velocity of the follower. Since it's inverse to the number of teeth, it is equal to teeth on the follower over teeth on driver. So let's do uh, find the overall velocity ratio for this simple gear train arrangement. For the velocity ratio from A to B is the teeth on the follower and teeth on the driver. So the follower has 28 teeth and the driver has 42 teeth. The ratio is 0.67. Now for this next stage, blue to red, velocity ratio from B to C or blue to red is the teeth on the follower which is 14 and teeth on the driver which is 828 and it is 0.5. So the overall velocity ratio from A to C would be multiplication of this 0.67 to 0.5 which gives you 0.335 which is exactly uh, inverse of 1 over 3. Remember on the previous slide we found the teeth ratio of 3 now the velocity ratio is 1 over 3. So that is inversely proportional to the teeth ratio. Notice if your velocity is greater than 1, it's a reduction gear. If it's a velocity ratio is less than 1, it's a multiplier gear. So what it means is that on this arrangement, power is being transferred from green to red gear. Since my velocity ratio is 1 over 3, my speed or velocity is being multiplied or it is more than the driver. And it is likely because you have bigger gear, green, then smaller, then smaller, red. So since you are reducing the diameter of the gear, the speed will be increasing. So that's why the velocity ratio is less than 1. If our power transfer direction is being reversed, then you'll see the ratio will be opposite. So now let's see how to find velocity ratio of compound gear train. So far on the previous two slides, we have learned how to find velocity ratio for a simple gear train. Now we're going to learn it for compound gear train. The formula remains the same. Only difference is that for simple gear train, we saw there is no effect on the idler gear, but for compound gear train, all the gears will have effects. So the definition remains the same. For example, from A to B, the velocity ratio will be velocity of A over B or the teeth on B follower over driver. Same for velocity ratio C to D will be the ratio of teeth on D driver and teeth, uh, teeth on follower over teeth on the um, driver. This In this case, it will be teeth on C, not A. So the overall velocity ratio will be the velocity ratio from A to B multiplied velocity ratio from C to D, same formula. If you put those and you'll see the arrangement is such that the overall velocity ratio will be the product of teeth on the follower gears over the product of the teeth on the driver gears. So if we plug the values, the product of teeth on the follower gear, so in this case, first YOLO is the follower of the green and the red is the follower. So for YOLO has 14 and the red one has 14 teeth, so 14, 14. And the product of the driver gears, so green and blue are the driver, A or C is the driver, so you have 28 and 42 teeth. So the velocity ratio again becomes 0.167. So the velocity ratio is less than 1, that means your, it's a multiplier gear. The speed 
from the driver to the follower will increase and you can see that the red one is a small gear so the velocity will be higher and that's why it's a multiplier gear one thing just um, to note that the gear B and C though they have different teeth the yellow and the blue they are on the same shaft and that's why they will have the same velocity for the different shaft will different velocity but for the all the gears on the same shaft will have same velocity